Thanks to everyone for uh, inviting me. Thanks to Quinn and Francis for inviting me and uh, everyone for organizing this. Um, my name is Michael McCandless and I'm a PhD student and researcher at the University of Kentucky in geography. Um, some of my previous work on sort of Web3 is through blockchain and blockchain related topics, uh, in particular Matt Zook's work on um, the blockchain industry, the global geographies of it. Um, but what I'm presenting today, this actually comes at a really good time because I'm gearing up to start thinking more about um, a dissertation proposal here in a bit. And what I'll be talking about today is really kind of trying to think about um, DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, and then their sort of relationship to property and real estate investment. Um, so it is kind of really speculative and kind of on the fringe of things that are like happening in this moment. Um, but I'm just trying to play around with a couple of ideas here. So hopefully that comes through. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with DAOs, but uh, I liked Quinn's definition of a subreddit with a bank account. Um, and in a lot of ways, it functions that way. They've been really central to, um, they're basically a group of people that come together around a smart contract, often with pools of capital that they've used to sort of seed investment into various Web3 software developments is kind of one of the ways I think about them. But increasingly, um, what I'm trying to think about is this movement of DAOs, and in particular, is this sort of like investment capacity of DAOs into sort of really small, but I think significant real estate investment. Um, recently, you can see in this top right hand corner, the screenshot I have and my collage of screenshots. Um, a law was passed in Wyoming in 2021, 2020. Um, I'm sure some of you are familiar, but it allowed DAOs to incorporate as limited liability companies in the state of Wyoming, which is really significant because LLCs incorporated in Wyoming can operate across the US. Um, but it allowed DAOs to begin purchasing property. And there's some significant ways that they've gone about doing that. Um, City DAO was one of the first that got a lot of press for this, for purchasing a parcel of land in Wyoming with the sort of vision of uh, creating a city that has a, an entire governance process that's run on chain. Um, also importantly, uh, LinksDAO kind of has a similar vision, but with a golf course that they're looking to purchase outside of Wyoming. Um, and then with the idea of using NFTs as a sort of governance mechanism for um, determining who can access the golf course at what times. And that's also kind of significant because it allows them to kind of skirt securities regulation that limits you from um, fractionalizing land and then tokenizing it in that way. Um, but I think it's also useful to emphasize this sort of scale of DAOs that have incorporated in Wyoming as LLC. There's 484, and this screenshot is from um, a screenshot I took two, two and a half weeks ago before I gave a different presentation. And I checked right before this talk, and there's already been like 26, 27 more DAOs that have incorporated in that time frame. So it's not the most scientific metric here in terms of um, DAOs incorporating its LLCs in Wyoming. But I, I do think there is pretty significant growth, and some estimates put total DAOs at around 5,000, and this would be about 10% of that estimate. Um, but not all of them kind of have the same public profile as LinkedIn or CityDAO. A lot of these are sort of smaller scale, like you can see, and kind of verge on the weird, like the For Christ Foundation, which you can see both in the screenshot of the Wyoming Secretary of State's website, as well as the Twitter screenshot, um, which are kind of just smaller local scale people who are thinking about how to generate passive investment from real estate. Uh, or passive income from real estate. This is a familiar story that we've kind of seen across history, right? Like not unique to Web3. Um, but the sort of accumulation of those things leads me to this sort of question that we were asked to end on, which is uh, what does on-chain governance of property mean for real estate? Uh, which is a big sort of socio-theoretical question, but one of the things that I think is kind of animating my research is this thinking back to the sort of impacts that Web2 has had on real estate and real estate investment and real estate governance, um, in particular the platformization of real estate investment and real estate governance, thinking of like Desiree Fields works on the sort of automation of platform governance, which makes new political economies and new markets possible. Um, 
if we're thinking about that in terms of what Web3 might hold for real estate or real estate investment, um, I think ideas of like the fractionalization of ownership are one of those that could potentially bring about a new paradigm in how real estate operates, but also things like NFTs being used as governance mechanisms within how property and real estate works. Um, I don't really have any answers on that front other than to say um, major changes in how the internet has worked have often resulted in major changes and major market like shifting opportunities within how property and real estate works as well. And that's the sort of interesting area of analysis.